Hey there, and welcome back to my channel. So today I have my biggest haul ever yet. I think this is, yeah, definitely my biggest haul. I have 10 fragrances to show you guys here today. And this was actually my first order from Fragrance X. So I'd never ordered from them before and it was a really good experience, honestly. It got here quicker than it said it was by a number of days. And obviously it's based out in the States and I'm in Canada, so <clears throat> that was the whole thing. And it, yeah, it, was, it was a great experience. I was super happy with it. And I was super happy because they had a whole lot of 4711s, 10 to be exact, that I did not own and that were not available anywhere else. And I got them all. You know I did because I am a hardcore 4711 fan. I could be their spokesperson, except they don't know who I am, which is fine. And I, it's the house that I have the most fragrances of by a long shot. They're super inexpensive. They don't last very long, but they're all out of clones and they're all my jam. I'm obsessed with all of them. I just love this house. So eventually I will do a full video on it if you guys are interested, but for now I haven't because I just know there's more I'm gonna get, I just know. So we're gonna get into it. There's a whole lot, as I said, so I don't wanna waste any more time. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and all that information, including where I mostly shop and coupon codes and all that stuff is in the description box below. So don't forget to check that out and let's get into it. So the first one we're gonna go with is one that's just um, one on its own. So it's not in a collection. I'll mention that whenever I can to tell you if it's in one of their collections, if it's one of like the OGs that mentioned like two notes, we're gonna get into it. So this was actually a giant bottle and it was super inexpensive. I think this was like only 11, 11 to $13, I'm not sure, um, for 400 ml. So this is my, it's called Ice Eau de Clone, obviously by 47 Eleven. And this is my second largest, one second, bottle I even have from 47 Eleven because I do own a 800 or yeah, I have the 800 do uh, dollar, 800 mil 47 Eleven, the original Eau de Clone, which I use to fill up my 100 mil. This is definitely the largest bottle of fragrance I own, but, and it's also the largest 47 Eleven, but this one, She's pretty big too, because she's 400 mil, and it was such a good deal, so I'm really excited. Oh, and I should mention, they're all blind buys, and I'm excited for it. So this has bergamot, violet leaf, mint, tarragon, peach, and pineapple. You will see that a lot of 4711s have similar notes, um, because they tend to lean towards like the European eau de clone vibe, with a lot of citrus and florals. None of them are gonna be like spicy and ambery, but they might have a spice to them, but we'll see. So yeah, I'm excited. This one's huge. Obviously, this one's not gonna be a spray bottle. It's like my giant 800 mil one, and I'm not expecting it to be, but I hope the smaller ones, the rest of them uh, are, because I hate dabber bottles. So this one, we will have to kind of Yeah, we will have to just dab on our hand here and I'm just gonna rub them together, which I usually hate to do, but. Ooh, okay, this one's definitely, it's very green smelling. I, I feel like it's a very citrusy green, slightly bitter because of the tarragon. I don't get, I was wondering if I get any pineapple. I was intrigued by the pineapple and the pear, or and the peach, sorry but I don't really get that. I get very like a leafy, minty citrus. It's interesting. This is actually quite different from uh, many, if not all of the other 4711s I have. And probably, I mean, we'll get to the end where <clears throat> I somehow put these in order of worst to best like I do with all my hauls, but I have a feeling this is gonna be slightly lower down the list just because I'm gonna wear it uh, way less but we shall see and we'll get to the others. This, like I said, is gonna be one I wear less also because it's a dabber bottle, but it was just too good of a price to pack, to like miss out on. I mean, 
I, I forget now how much it is. I wish I remembered, but it was less than fifteen dollars uh, and for four hundred mil. Like I just had, I had to try it out. Yeah, it's very green and minty with some citrus in there. Slightly like bitter in the green, but not too bad. And I do really like wearing these little clones after showers or before bed because they just last long enough to kind of give you that fresh vibe but they're not you know like beast mode while you're sleeping they're also incredible for summer something like this to just like liberally uh, use on your whole body which is what these odor clones were made for super excited about it okay so now we're going to get to the remixes so i've got three of them i don't know if there were any other years but i have 2018 the 2019 and the 2020 they come out with a limited edition every year and we're just going to get into it so the 2018 we'll start with is this one <clears throat> and it lists bergamot lemon tea bitter orange neroli uh gentiana musk cedar and cashmere so <clears throat> let's get into it again you just never know if they're gonna be the dabbers or the sprays, but I really, really hope it's a spray and it is. Okay, let's see. Ooh, this one does smell like, <clears throat> it smells like actual freshly sque squeezed orange juice where it's a little more bitter, like organic oranges in, the height of summer where it's a little more bitter than <clears throat> like orange juice that you're just gonna buy and it's a little bit more aromatic maybe you're also smelling like orange trees and it's it's um a little more sour as well like if you've mixed freshly squeezed orange juice with some lemon juice as well i really like this one. Oh wow it's really really nice Again, right now in this video, I can't really speak to their individual lasting powers, but I will say none of them last super, super long. I think <clears throat> a couple hours is usually how long they're gonna last. Um, some a little less, some I suppose a little more, but yeah, I really, really like this one. And a bitter orange is a really nice note, I find, because, and a realistic one like this, like it just, it's so invigorating, like I feel like it really wakes you up. So that is Remix 2018. Then we get to Remix 2019, and I was especially excited for this one. This one had <clears throat> the highest reviews out of the three, excuse me, and so I was really excited. And this one is often also referred to as Remix Lavender. So this has lavender, lemon, bergamot, mate, so excited for that, iris, very excited. Freesia, hibiscus seed, musk, praline, and sandalwood. Now praline, as I mentioned, <clears throat> a lot of these fragrances have like similar notes, but praline is a note I have not seen in any 4711s. They don't really have gourmands in that way. They'll have, you know, fruity fragrances, especially citrus fruits, but not in any way like a gourmand with caramel and praline and chocolate, like that's not the vibe. So I was very intrigued about this one in particular out of the remixes. So we will discover it together. Ooh, okay. This one immediately very different, which is a good sign. Uh, the notes were very different as well, but I hate when they have like limited editions in whatever brand and they're all so similar that it's like you just change the packaging. This is not the same. This is a definite beautiful lavender in its opening and it's way less citrusy um, it's actually not very citrus heavy compared to how citrus heavy 47 11s can be and it has kind of a tea note which is oh no because wow that makes sense because of mate it's it's very like a lavender tea cocktail without it being you know liquor <clears throat> like smelling like it's alcoholy. It definitely doesn't have that, but those like artisanal lavender, if you've ever had like a lavender syrup drink, that's kind of what it's giving me. I have to say, I don't really get praline 
in particular, but this definitely has a stronger, like woody base that would be in a kind of gourmand scent. I'm interested in coming back to this one because the praline is in the base. This has a much more pronounced woody feel to it than again, you see in off, you see at all in 4711s, which is interesting. I'm really on board with this, this one. So that is the Remix 2019. I think I'm understanding a lot um, why it's had so many great reviews. And then finally, 4711 Remix 2020. So this was from last year and this had Italian lemon, yuzu, shiso, solar notes, orange, blossom, violet, rose, white musk, amberwood, and patchouli. Again, I was interested out of the three. I felt like the 2018 one was the least interesting. I still liked it, but this one interested me because I love when fragrances have solar notes. They get a lot more summery and just kind of beachy, especially when it's with orange blossom and sometimes with ylang ylang or something. It's usually like beachy kind of fragrances have that. So I was on board. This one's yellow and let's discover it together. Ooh, this one. Okay. This one right at the beginning, it really did smell like a summery fragrance. And now I feel like I'm getting a lot of super tart citrus, but it is, um, I don't know. It's like mellowed. It's super tart and yet it's mellowed by a beachy flare. I don't get, um, very like, I don't get like a heady orange blossom. The orange blossom in this is very clean and it's very crisp. If that makes any sense. I love when orange blossom gets grapey. Um, and I wasn't expecting it to be that way, but it, it definitely, if you hate that, cause that's not everyone's vibe, the orange blossom in this is not grapey at all. It has a lot more of like a neroli feel to it or smell to it in this. And it, yeah, it's just like mellowing that tart citrus in the opening. I really like it. Again, it's got like a slight tinge of woodiness to it, a very slight tinge. Don't get me wrong. It's not a woody fragrance, but that doesn't show up very often. So when I'm comparing 40 in 47 11s, I should say. So when I can smell it, it does seem more interesting in this particular line. I really like this one as well. It's going to be hard to choose favorites by the end, but that is 47 11's remix 2020. All right. So now we're going to get to, what is it? The fifth fragrance already. This one was, uh, just like some of them was, was in a tester bottle. So I, or it's a tester bottle. So I took it out of its box and it, this is the first tester fragrance that I've ever seen actually say tester straight on it, which I don't mind. It also doesn't have a cap. Again, I don't mind. This one was also very, very uh, inexpensive. And this is the 4711 Nouveau Cologne. For a very long time, I thought this was the same as the original 4711 original Eau de Cologne. It's not. So I didn't pick it up for a number of years because I just thought it was the same thing, just in a different packaging. Apparently, this is just very much like the new formulation of that original formulation. So we will see what I think. This has yuzu, lychee, blackcurrant, peony, geranium, heliotrope, musk, sandalwood, and tonka bean. Note wise, it seemed actually quite different <clears throat> to be honest. Um, and so we will discover it together and see what my first impressions are because I know the original Eau de Cologne very well. I've been wearing it for a number of years, so. Okay. This seems more shampooy straight off the bat. It's giving me more of like a creamy shampooiness uh, that isn't in the original. And the original um, reminds me a lot more like leans towards Neroli Portofino by Tom Ford. I've always felt that way. I don't know if everyone else feels that way, but it leans more towards that. And this Nouveau Cologne leans more towards shampooy fragrances that, um, uh, obviously are a little more citrusy, but there is something about this as shampoo, which I do really like. I will always have a special place in my heart for the original. And I feel like if they just had called this something else, 
I wouldn't compare the two, but if I'm comparing the two, it is hard. Um, it is hard to beat the original in my book, but this is a really nice one. And I do love a shampoo fragrance. The citrus is definitely more tart than the, the remixes that I was mentioning. Even the bitter orange one, this is a lot more of like a lemon yuzu type citrus. And it's got some florals in there, but I don't know what it is from the notes. Maybe it's the heliotrope because that makes it kind of powdery. Um, this isn't powdery, but I imagine it's kind of that that's giving it a sort of clean vibe, which I am all for. So that is 47 Levin's New Oak Clone. Okay, then you guys, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. There is a floral range. It's called the Floral Collection by 4711, and there are four fragrances in it. And I have already owned, <clears throat> you guys saw in my last video that I hauled, um, that I have already bought the lilac one, because that's the one I'd found originally. And now I have two more. So I'm missing Magnolia, I believe. Um, but I now have the two others. So we will start with Rose. And this one's not a tester bottle, so it's still in the box. And this has green tea, bergamot, mandarin, rose, freesia, violet, sandalwood, and musk. Now, note-wise, this really struck a fancy with me because that is so my jam. I love the floral collection because they all have bottle like background colors that match the color of the box and in general kind of match the flower. And so I'm really on board. The lilac one in this one was incredible. I'm obsessed with it. Um, and it was very unique for 4711, so I'm intrigued to see what the others smell like. And I will say, even though I'm missing Magnolia, that's the flower I was least interested in. I will get it if I find it, because it's me, let's be honest, but... Ooh, okay. This is reminding me of something. I can't for the life of... Okay, wait. I have to find this because I remembered, I found that lilac, I knew that it reminded me of a fragrance in my collection and I found that out. So in the second impressions, I'm definitely gonna talk about that because it's incredible how similar they are. And this is the same, you guys. I don't know what this is. This is reminding me less of something else, but there is definitely something here. I don't know if it's maybe like a green tea related really fragrance because I don't really get a lot of tea in this. I get some, I get kind of like a lemon rose. Yeah, that's what I'm getting, like more of like lemon rose. I don't get any violet really, unfortunately. Um, and a little freesia or like just kind of like a rose floral melody or remedy, not melody, um, mixture with some lemon. It is really nice. You know what this kind of reminds me of in terms of vibe? Not in terms of necessarily the scent. I have to find what, what that is, but it reminds me of Ralph Lauren fragrances. Like they're super feminine romance type fragrances, or maybe it's even Chloe fragrances. I have to, I have to check, but yeah, it's, it's reminding me of that vibe of just like the super mom um, florals that are just like nice floral citruses. They make you feel like safe when you smell them. Yeah, that's what that's reminding me of. Okay, so that's Rose. And then we get to the floral collection, obviously, Jasmine. Now I'm super excited for this one because this has bergamot, tea, jasmine, neroli, musk, cedar, and tonka. And this one's all white, so that's fun. It's what it looks like. And we will smell it together. Spray it a little higher this time. And let's see, let's see if this one reminds me of anything. Oh, you know what? This actually, it does remind me of something. It reminds me of the original 4711 mixed with the ja like not the actual jasmine tree, but I have like a very mini jasmine tree. Uh, 
in my place and every you know day or two there's like one or two flowers that you can pick off and they smell incredible i put them by my desk and yeah they just like scent up my whole space i love it i love jasmine this smells like those actual jasmine flowers that i smell every day which i'm obsessed with if you mixed that in with the original 4711 eau de clone wow i really like this one and the jasmine scent i'm telling you is very authentic to those jasmine flowers i have on my plant it's completely there i love this i super super love this one so that is from the floral collection and that is jasmine all right so now we're going to get to the last three and these three are all in a separate collection so this is from they call it the intense collection but it's also the one where it's based off of different places so again i already own one if you haven't checked out the last 47 11 haul do check it out i got the something something scandinavia i got the scandinavia one and i did like it but it was very super super green and kind of more like colony like a men's cologne um, but I was, I've was i always been really, really intrigued by this collection and they're really hard to find. There, is, there are five in the entire collection. I have the other three, so I'm only missing one again, and that is the Lagoons of Laos. I couldn't find it anywhere. Eventually, if I see it, I will get it, just like the Magnolia from the Flora collection. But for now, I'm happy with what I have, and we will just get started with, let's see, we'll get started with Sunny, I think it's called... Yes, the sunny seaside of Zanzibar. And these are also aqua, uh, or they're otoclones uh, that are intense otoclones. So they do supposedly last longer. And what I can say is I obviously don't know about the others, um, but what I will say is that I do know for the Scandinavia one, it does last longer and it's a bit, yeah, it's like more, just like how the floral collection is a little bit more perfumey and less eau de cologne like, um, the intenses are a little bit more, or the one I do have was a little bit more like a eau de toilette, like a men's cologne that was an eau de toilette. So yeah, this is Sunny Seaside of Zanzibar. And this has, I was so intrigued by the notes on this one. This has watermelon, star anise, coconut, frangipani, musk, vanilla, vetiver, and cedar. This, these are all pretty, interesting notes for 4711 they never i've never seen coconut in any of their scents watermelon star anise all three of those were interesting even musk uh doesn't show up as much like musk vanilla this is a very gourmand i mean for 4711 it seemed like a pretty gourmand one so i'm excited and these are the smaller bottles that are kind of textured i have pretty much every bo bottle they come out with um, at this point so let's see Ooh, oh my God, you guys, I'm obsessed. This is like a love at first sniffs kind of scent. This is very off brand for 4711. This smells like a Caribbean getaway. This is all about that coconut vanilla. I don't know if I get watermelon. I don't know, cause watermelon, when I'm thinking about it in a fragrance, my mind just goes to L'Imperatrice 3 uh, by Dolce & Gabbana. And this is not there. Maybe it's slightly more watermelon candy, but this is all about that coconut, vanilla, beachy kind of fragrance. Like I am transported to the sunny seaside of Zanzibar or really just any super hot, like tropical type getaway. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with this. This is a, I cannot wait for summer because this is really even now, like this is what I'm gonna be wearing on any hot day uh, for the entire like spring, summer time. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. I love this. This was such a good one. Okay, so I'm now even more excited for the other two. Um, and the next one we'll try is, let's see. Pure Breeze of Himalaya. So this one, I didn't realize, I thought they were tester bottles because they came in these boxes, but they actually are in their boxes. And so I usually always like to take the cellophane off uh, before I film these videos. I never smell them or open the box, but I take the cellophane off so that it's not 
super annoying on camera to hear and watch me open cellophane, but I didn't realize. So here we are. And like I said, this is pure breeze of Himalaya. This had pink pepper, mandarin, mountain air, rose, lily of the valley, musk, uh, cashmere, and, and broxen. I didn't think I ever saw and broxen in this either. This says lively, fresh, minerally, an intense breeze inspired by the top of the world. So I'm guessing like the mountains and the Himalayas, obviously. This is a beautiful, like soft sky blue with a tinge of like cornflower blue, which is one of my favorite colors. I'm all for it. So let's see how this one. Ooh, oh my God, this collection is so my favorite. I love this. This does have a peppery kick, which usually wouldn't be my jam, but it's very, okay. I, it's hard to place. It has mountain air as a note, which is kind of like a gimmicky thing, because what could that be? But what I will say, whatever they put in to give that the vibe, is it smells very like ozonic. And I don't want to say aquatic because I feel like that turns people off, but sometimes florals that are softer can have a aquatic feel to them or they can smell kind of like dew on florals. And that's what this gives. It's a very airy fragrance. And the peppery kick is just right at the start. And even now as I'm smelling it, it's already mellowed out. And it's so, it's like a beautiful, sweet, airy, I have like water on, like dew on flowers, kind of mountain air fragrance. It's also like, it's clean. It's got kind of like a cotton, uh, I don't know if it was like Bath and Body Works had like a soft cotton or something fragrance. It's reminding me of that cotton fresh type fragrance. I love this. Oh my God, it's gonna be so hard to choose favorites. This is stunning. And you know what's a shame is I'm pretty sure the other fragrance I have from this collection, the uh, Scandinavia one is in a larger bottle and it doesn't even come close to these. So <sighs> such is the way. And then the last one is Floral Fields of Ireland. And this has Osmanthus, Mandarin, Lemon, Orange Blossom, Mimosa, Jasmine, Cedar, Woodsy Notes, and Sandalwood. Again, I was pretty impressed um, when I saw like Osmanthus and Mimosa, just cause I haven't seen them before in 4711 fragrances. And I am a huge, I mean, I love Osmanthus, but I'm a huge Mimosa. Like I I've gotten, like I got into a kick last year and whenever I see it in a fragrance, I'm like, Oh, I should try that. So I'm into it. I love a good floral. This is a beautiful kind of deep, well, the box is like an ox blood, but this is kind of like a really nice magenta purple. So we will see what we think, whether we can get some mimosa scent or if it's just gonna be overpowered by the citrus and the jasmine, because jasmine's a pretty strong note. Ooh. Wow, this one's really nice too. I feel like I do. The orange blossom in this is is a little grapey, which is nice. It does, it gets a little grapey, it's incredible. I don't get as much mimosa, honestly, but I'm all for that grapey orange blossom, which makes sense, because the bottle's purple. And I do, I get kind of like a, fu maybe it's the osmanthus, maybe it's the mimosa, but it, it's a little bit more fuzzy. You guys, I love this. This intense collection is so stunning. I've loved all three of them. I really, really think they were so nice. So like such a beautiful surprise, especially after the Scandinavia one wasn't my absolute jam. It's a very, it's very masculine leaning. Whereas these three, I feel like a lot are a lot more feminine leaning, which is more um, suitable. But I love a lot of like masculine fragrances like full on men's fragrances and unisex fragrances. So for me, if something's not matching, I feel like a, a lot more women would definitely agree. And these are a lot more feminine leaning, these three intenses personally. So those were all of the scents, but now let's get to putting them in order. All right, so I have done the impossible and put these 10 fragrances in order of least 
to fit to most favorite and I'm not gonna give bigger descriptions because usually I have very very less fragrances than this and I can do a little description you guys saw what I liked and all that stuff um, while I was hauling. So we're just gonna go from 10th to first. So in 10th place, unfortunately, it's this giant bottle of ice, but I kind of knew it was gonna be that because this one, there had to be a reason uh, why the price was down, A. But also it, it's just the minty greenness kind of, it smells a little like mouthwash-y. And so it's, it's fine. I'm gonna wear all of these. It was $11, but that's definitely in last place. Um, then we get to Rose. Honestly, Rose was in ninth place because I feel like I have, this is the one that reminded me the most of something I already have in my collection. So that's already some notes or some points docked rather, I should say. Then we've got the remix that was the 20, what was it? The 20, I think the, it was the orange one. Um, and this one, I think it was the 2018. This one just, I liked it, but out of the other ones, um, or maybe this was the 20, yeah. Yeah, okay, this one was the bitter orange one. So this was the 2018 one, and I did like it. It was a little bit orange juice vibes, and it was nice, but there are definitely other fragrances that hit the mark more for me, so that's in eighth place. Then we've got Remix 2020, which was just that little bit better, um, that little bit, yeah, just it had that one edge with uh, the orange blossom and a little bit more of that like lemon yuzu type vibe. So that was in what, seventh place. Then in sixth place, actually, I put Nouveau Clone. I really liked this. This was shampoo-y in a really nice way. I am gonna see this as kind of its own thing and not really compare it to the original Eau de Clone because to me, they're different enough where this is so much of a new take that um, I like that in a whole league of its own. And this one's a lot more shampoo-y and yeah, I like it. Then in fifth place, we have the Remix 2019. So this is the lavender one. I loved this. Like I said, this is just, I'm all about Lavender and this is just like the most beautiful lavender syrup. Um, maybe like lavender syrup, green tea mixed drink. Love it. Absolutely love it. Can't wait to wear that. Then in fourth place, I put Jasmine. I really liked this one. This was, oh, this just really took me back to the original 4711 with actual jasmine flowers, like I was saying, that I have at my place. It's a really, really nice one for any jasmine lover out there. Then the top three are all from that intense collection. So I just put them in order of what I was least to most excited about, but they're all incredible. In third place, Floral Fields of Island. I just, I had to choose. This was, if I had to give up one of them, this would be the first one I'd give up. Um, out of these three, second place, this uh, Pure Breeze of Himalaya. This had like that Cotton Mountain air feel that I, that's just to die for. And in first place, you guys, it had to be this. I'm so excited to wear the sunny seaside of Zanzibar. In fact, even though I'm wearing everything, I'm gonna spray some more on me. This just smells like the best coconut, like really expensive, $50 sunscreen that's like this little, but it's, you know, supposed to last you for a very long time that's been scented with coconut. I just love this. It is the best one out of the whole bunch. So that is my haul. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you stuck till the end, I love you, love you, love you. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Bye.